Hi, I'm going to talk about a famous problem using the product rule for dependent events and it's known as the Monty Hall problem. Now Monty Hall was the host of a game show called Let's Make a Deal and so it's attributed to him because every week back in the 70s and 80s he would have as his final round for his um, top prize winning contestant uh, the ability to choose between door number one, door number two, and door number three for some kind of fabulous grand prize. Sometimes it's a car, sometimes it's a an expensive vacation, or to some exotic location or something. And the other two doors had what they call zonks. Okay, they had zonks. Which meant that they were just hilarious prizes that there's no way you're going to take at home. So let's say you choose door number two. So as you know from just basic probability, the probability of success is 1 over 3, but you're guessing door number 2. Now the game show host tells you, oh, I'm going to show you what's behind door number 3, okay? And invariably when he does show the contestant what's behind door number 3, it's always a zonk. So we're given that door number 3 is a zonk, should the contestant stick with his door, or switch to the only remaining door. There is actually an answer to this problem through dependent events. The product rule for dependent events, as it's described in our textbook, is that actually known as Bayes' theorem. And it's saying that the probability of two things, uh, two dependent events occurring together, is the probability of one of the events given the other has occurred times the probability of the other actually occurring. So basically both A and B are probabilistic events. They both have they both have probabilities attached to them, but one is linked to the other. One kind of depends on the other. And that's what, you know, that's Bayes' theorem. That's also the product rule for dependent events. So if we take P of A and B, which is now X and Y for some reason, and make it equal to P of B and A just reverse the letters, it doesn't seem like we gain anything from that, but um, that's an important equation to know because actually P of A and B follows this equation and we can just arrange the letters this way, P of X given Y times P of Y. P of, the probability that the first door you chose had the prize given that Monty Hall showed you one of the zonks given the probability of the zonks being high behind one of the doors or let's just say given the uh, times the probability that Monty Hall chose one of the doors for zonks okay again this is from the audience members point of view and here we're saying the probability of Monty Hall choosing one of the zonks given that you chose the prize is now multiplied by the probability that you chose the door with the prize that your first choice was a prize Okay, so this is sort of being going to be used um, to figure out whether you should stick or switch. Notice there's nothing in this equation that discusses switching, but it's implied, and I'll show you how. Now we're going to show, for example, the probability that the car is behind the door you chose, that the door you first chose, given the new information, um, that that probability sticks as being 1 and 3. Even with the new information, that probability doesn't change because you made that choice before you knew the information. Okay? So here's the probability Y, P of Y, that Monty Hall chooses one of the doors for showing you the new information. So if we now solve, this is the one we want to show. Now I, I'm saying that it's 1 over 3, that this probability doesn't change, but let's show mathematically that it doesn't change. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate this term, and we're going to divide both sides by P of Y, okay? And so this is what we get. We get this uh, equation here. P of X given Y is equal to P of Y given X times P of X over P of Y. Well, P of Y given X, the probability that Monty Hall was going to choose one of the doors given that you chose the prize is really based on the two remaining doors, so that's really 1 over 2. The probability behind you choosing the winning door occurred before you knew any of the information, so that's still 1 over 3. The probability that um, Monty Hall was going to choose one of, the, one of the doors for a zonk 
really he only had to choose between two doors, so that's also 1 over 2. Notice that we have a cancellation, and the probability that x given y, that you've chosen the prize, that your first choice is the prize, given that Monty Hall showed you a zonk was behind one of the other doors, actually works out to 1 over 3, because the 1 over 2 cancels. Okay? So that's, uh, that's that, and that's from, and that's the probability from sticking. Well, what about switching? That's the only other thing you can do. Your only other choice is a switch. There's no third way to do this problem. So you're either sticking with that door and you're dealing with the probability of one-third, or you're switching. That's one minus a third, which means that the probability of getting this prize by switching is two over three. Obviously, you're twice as likely to get a prize if you switch than if you stick with your door. So you should always switch. Always switch and you will take advantage of this probability. Although one can say that it's likely, very likely, that hey, you know, after switching, maybe the door maybe the prize was really was behind the original door you chose. And that could always happen. Two thirds probability is not a complete guarantee. So so what we're saying though, if we if you do this repeatedly, if you repeatedly play this game again and again and again, you will win way more often than you'll lose. You will win two-thirds of the time. 